The hero is very high RNG though, because in some lanes, if you get the Harpy creep in the first spawn, it's like an auto win. Or you get the Ghost creep, it's also an auto win. And then there are some games where you like stack 15 times and all you get are Cobalt Foremans. And you're like, well, what the fudge am I going to do with a Cobalt Foreman? Wait, you don't like the Cobalt Foreman? Well, they do like they do like eight damage, and they make you run fourteen percent faster. That's they the don't swaggiest do creep in the game. All right. <laughs> well, not in lane, not as a Chen player, that's for sure. <laughs> the only thing worse than the Cobalt Formans are the little Cobalts. Like those are worse than the Cobalt Formans. Do you remember the uh, the Cobalt Foreman challenge instead of the the Shadow right, yeah. challenge? Yeah. What was your best That's, that's score? impossible. <laughs> I think it was like, was it 10 minutes that you were able to do it? Yeah, you did it. Or I think you died, right? Well, I never made it 10 minutes. I died. I always died. Because I tried to tank the creep wave with my body. Because instead of going, because if you go into the tower, you would never get a last hit, right? So, like, I would just, like, tank the creep. And then I, I would die, like, five minutes every time. But I got, like, I remember my, my record was, like, 21 or 22 or something like that. It was that's, pretty good, actually. That's pretty good. Right. I but like yeah, not I even died close so to that. <laughs> it is hard. The thing is, like, you know what's harder than the Cobalt challenge? The Harpy challenge. The Harpy has eight damage. The Cobalt has like a little bit more than that, I think. The Harpy is at its range too, so like, it's really hard to last it with a Harpy. I've never tried that challenge. Yeah, you should try after this. Abaddon picked oh. up. That's there. It is. A little bit surprising. I thought that Luchini would want to be going for that, but oh well. Now they can't. Abba's pretty good against Void too, so not that much of a surprise. Mm. Okay, now they just need a really hard carry on the side of Infamous. Five seconds remaining. Because it's gonna be a. Three Abba, five Chen, four Murana, and Kunkka mid. Right. Unless they plan on sending Murana carry. Which is not good at all. The only carries available that I think are decent. With Chen. I mean, uh, they can still go Gyrocopter. Yeah, Gyrocopter is still good. I do. Th I think they should ban Jaro from here. Jaro is pretty strong with Chen. Uh, not sure. There aren't too many heroes left. Bloodseeker is okay. I don't think anybody in this region likes to play Bloodseeker though. So. What? Do they play the Bloodseeker? They do play Bloodseeker. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then Bloodseeker is good. I don't know. I'm just, I am just. I haven't seen any Bloodseekers because I've seen way too many Gyros. So. Yeah, Hec well, Hector's not in this game, but Hector's been spamming Bloodseeker. Oh, oh yeah. Hector plays Bloodseeker, for sure. Yeah, I know that Hector's been... I lost a Hector Bloodseeker like, the other day, so... I know for a fact that the, that boy does play some Bloodseeker. He's been expanding his hero pool. At TI, he's been playing a bunch of Lifestealers and Brave Kings. Now that he's out of TI, he's been playing a lot of other heroes. I saw him play Ricky this morning in the game you were casting. Right. And then he played Bloodseeker as well. He's picked up Terrorblade as one of his heroes. I mean, he's just trying to branch out. Well, Gyrocopter left in, but they Wraith go King. for the Wraith King instead. Yeah. I mean, those are the two heroes that are good against Void as a carry, I guess, on carry and carry matchup. So. Wraith King West Chan is pretty decent. I'm not sure how it fares against Sand King Leshrac, though. Uh, and for Radiant, what's a good pick here? Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Something damages him. Well, I guess it's okay damage. I think Leo style asked for it, though. Yeah, it's a Leo style hero for sure. It's not the most reliable chrono damage, but it's not bad. You can also go for setups after it as well. I think right. the real the real deal with Chrono here is that you've got Faceless Void and Witch Doctor together is the most right. important thing. And you all like you have a ton of damage that can go under the Chrono if you hit some good ones. Yeah. 
I think you this game it's it's okay to chrono your teammates in chrono because like sandstorm is really important if you can chrono them in it. Lash is also really good if you can chrono them in it. Uh, Witch Doctor obviously you don't want to be chronoing the the ward, but and, and Ember just does his thing, you know, zipping around left and right like a mosquito. So yeah, I think I like Dynalicom which uh, Lucini's draft better. But Infamous has to win this game, so it'll be up to them to, you know, show us what they got and make sure they win this game so they get to the tiebreakers yeah, for the more, a potential slot in the minor. The more chaos they can create, the longer they can prolong these fights, I think the better chance Infamous has. That's really the yeah, the that's name of the game for them. Like, get these quick pickoffs and then prolong fights, and then by the end of it, you'll probably be winning. But they have to they have to get to that point first. And Lucini's draft looks really scary in team fights. They also have a very specific time in Infamous. Is the thing I think uh, this breaking radiance with Halberd is definitely the timing. Like when they hit that timing, they're just gonna walk down a lane and. Uh... Lucini just has to be ready for it. If they're not ready for it, they're just going to lose the game. So uh, I think it's pretty straightforward as to what they're planning to do. Either that or they just get ran over by Lucini too early and never hit their timing. So hopefully, you know, RoboZ played a very good Kunker last game. Hopefully we see the same performance this game. Indeed. So let's go ahead and get into the game. <laughs> this is the last one of the group stage. The first group stage of the... Uh, 2019-2020 DPC season. It's been pretty interesting. It's a new format that everybody's getting used to. But it seems pretty good for now. Can't escape your sins. And we'll be seeing some of our first major qualifiers uh, I, th I guess tomorrow or in the next 24 hours. Yep. It's pretty cool. Very exciting time. Like the first major, you know, there's a lot of slots available for everyone from NA and SA. It's been a long time since SA got two slots in a major. They usually only have one. It's looking like uh, Beast Coast and Pain Gaming are prime contenders for that two slots from SA. Uh, but any of these other teams could, you know, pull an upset and surprise everyone. So, it's a good day for Dota. It's definitely a good day for Dota. <laughs> Papita starts with the Hedris, you know, pretty standard stuff. You get your offlane in by the regen, send it to them. Uh, Kataro. He's hiding from the tree. Somehow they, they, it feels like they know. Look, he knows! The arrow, one, two, three, four, and the man is stunned. He's getting slapped down Ooh. right now. Oh my. That's gonna cost him some regen at least. My god. That bug got slapped. <laughs> I guess hide and seek pays off. Yep. <laughs> so in the mid lane, it's a little bit of a different uh, matchup for Robo Z because he's obviously not playing against the same person. Leo Styles, new new player, not even new hero, new player. So we'll see how he does with this matchup. We'll get those last hits up there because we're that cool. Early lead for Leo Style. Yeah, this is a fairly trade farm, trade farm kind of action kind of thing. Because uh, anytime Ember has Flame Guard up, uh, Kunkka can't trade with him. But otherwise, pretty Ember favored. Taking a look at the other lanes, lots of <laughs> harassing being tried for the Latrak. Um, throwing out a lot of split earths and missing all of them. And meanwhile, Madara tries to trade with the Wraithfire Blast for a couple of last hits. In the bottom lane. Um, Abaddon is... I don't know, he should be keeping the Marana rather so safe here. And he should be fine yeah. as well. He's getting... Yeah, 
a little bit of trade with the, the Faceless Void. He just heals off with the Time Walk. So I feel like this is going to be a fairly passive early game. Funny to note, though, is that they've burnt a lot of regen, like, from both sides. Like, Axel has Ooh. no regen left. Oh, he, he just walked into the arrow. Now he's getting silenced. Lots of damage coming oh, out cast. there, but the lucky cast bounce gets a second stun onto the Abaddon, but they get the first blood anyway. As soon as I say that, nothing is going to be happening. Yeah. That was a very nice arrow if I slid in there. The Mirana. Yeah, and a little bit Axel. of panic from the Faceless Void. Yeah. I mean, although Frank has almost no regen now, uh, the Qatar was pretty full up on regen because he just died. He got a free regen trip, I guess. That's what you call it. Um, interesting play to get the Centaur Courser in the top lane from the Chen. I guess that's just for a little bit of extra magic resist against the Sandstorm. Meanwhile, bottom yeah. with Doctor dies. I think he wanted to die though, like, because. Uh, he needed to get a regen. He was kind of useless in the bottom lane. He had no mana for any spells. I think it was definitely okay for him to die there. Oh, oh, Abaddon nice. in a lot of trouble. Nisi a fought a shield, but he didn't have enough mana for it until the last second. So I guess... Yeah, he was playing a little greedy there. But he, he also wanted to go home, honestly. As weird as it sounds, I think it was definitely okay for both of them to die there. Because Abbott was sitting in lane with almost no regen, and so was Mishtok there. So this way, they come back, like, he has, like, a set of Tangos and the South now. He brought Mangos for his, uh, Mirana, and, uh, Axel has a South too, so. Look at this guy. It's not the end of the world. Kobold Foreman, picked up by the Chen. Dude. Look at the creep, it is so bad. Oh my god, even with the buff, he does 30 damage. It's great. How could you... Oh. There's just nothing better than this. It is so bad. I mean, he's he's almost almost doing a little bit of damage to the West Track with this, and the West Track knows that he just can't chase the Chen like this. The Chen's too fast. He can't with the headdress. He's too fast because he has the Cobalt. You're right. It's insane. He's faster than the Lesh. Oh, never mind. The Lesh just picked up both boots. He's no longer faster. He can't even trade with him. Look at him. He's trying to kill the Cobalt. He knows. He knows what he is. He knows how good that is. Nice little dodge from the Oh, the Cobalt's dead! Oh, no. Over. The leg's over. Well, it's been a fun game, but I yeah. guess Luchini can win this. I guess. Alright, Leo style coming out to the bottom lane. Oh, he's gonna probably Abaddon get might be a little bit too far in. He's getting stunned up. He doesn't... Oh, they don't even get the kill. What? Oh, this... The arrow? He's still the dead. Dude, so that good. was a sick play by Sladens. Like, actually. Now, the Ember rotated bottom got zero runes. I mean, he got experience for two kills, but he shared it with two people. Well, what? Because Axel died. Oh, he gets re bottle refilled. Oh, that's... that's bog you. Terrible bottle usage by Axel. They're going on the Kunkka right. with a bunch of these creeps in the mid lane gone. And Kunkka's gonna go ahead and drink some rum. Alright. But it is still Maladic thing. The build's going to be a Midas for the Void. It's just time walking right before he gets that silence. But, you know, it's working out. He's trading effectively. Ooh, arrow the wrong way. Little Styles and Invis rune is running back mid. I don't think anything's gonna happen. Ooh, actually, speaking of nothing's gonna happen. The creeps are dying. There is... Malefic. A stun. Two stuns! Does he triple remnant this? I would triple remnant it. Oh, nice arrow on the backside to hit onto the Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor getting low. There's a couple remnants to get around for Leo Stout to secure the kill on Robo Z. I used to have the clarity sound as my ringtone for a while, so now whenever I hear it, I get triggered. 
<laughs> that is a terrible idea. <laughs> oh, that damage! The Latrax just dies! Well, there was a skeleton. Yeah, so many skeletons. Now they're feeding the skeletons to the Sand King. That was five golds, whatever. Yeah, what if you lose by five gold at the end of the game? Well, I mean, losing the game is losing the game. There's nothing to do with gold. <laughs> I've lost the game being ahead 40,000 gold, you know? Aggressive from the Faceless Void. He does have a Chrono available, and T is going to use it. Dude, this guy is having a rough one, as we call it. Madara is dead, though. Right before level 6, and he's kind of far uh, away from the hand Midas. Only 7 minutes in the game did it take for him to get a Harpy. If he had got a Harpy at like two minutes, this Ling was an insta win. Instead, he got this Garbanzo creep called the Cobalt Foreman. He's been picking up a lot of Centaurs actually, or the, the minor creeps in the camp that give the magic resist. Because yeah. he can't pick up the big creeps anyway, so it was either those or the, or the small one. I mean, I'd rather pick the magic resist than nothing at all. Oh, he has a Ghost Creep! Nice. Okay, this is like the dream creep squad, honestly. Slide. You have a Scotty, have a stun, and you have Zeus Arcling. Dude, Leo Scott is holding. There's nothing that the Marana can do about this hasted Ember Spirit. You can try to slow him down, but it's just not gonna work. The Tidebringer takes him low, but he's still fine. He doesn't care, he's just an Ember Spirit. Oh, I think Papita's gonna try to do something here, Tom. Ooh, arrow to hit onto the Faceless Void, and I don't think he can get out of this one. Dude, this is rough. The one, this bottom lane is rough for this Void. He's not having a good time. Well, they really want to go on to Oh, try. no. No, no, Papita. Do not die. I just feel bad for those creeps. He seems fine though. Uh, let's take a look at the net worth. Ember Spirit at the top of it. Robozy a little bit behind him, but looks like the Rain are doing pretty well for now. A pretty important game. Bottom lane. Oh, arrow misses, but does hit the range creep, so I guess that's some value gained. There's a lot of here is concentrated in the bottom lane for Infamous. Looks like both carries are going for um, the Midas. Right. Even though Void is having a rough one, Big King seems to be having a rough one. Centaur dies Midas. before it can stomp anything. We've got a kill. In mid. Interesting. Yeah, he just comboed him down. Good stun by the Grana. I think he hit him with the arrow. Can't even find this Ember. Oh, he didn't have his Flame Guard up, I guess. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he got Aerith, though, because I feel like Leo Style is the kind of player that would be able to dodge X almost every time, so. Unless it was like a major outplay. Like from Fog or something. So it looks like is about to hit his Midas. Madara's still quite far away from his. Oh! That's a 360 no scope arrow onto the Let's Drag. Let's Drag might find it difficult to get away from this. Dodges the stun! That's an easy kill. His Marana's, is only. His arrows are on point. It's all skill. Oh, Epicenter coming out onto the Chen. Chen does have the Aphotic Shield though and should be fine. Uh, Chronosphere is available. Borrow time gets procced on You're Frank. On 
and they got the Moonlight Shadow, so they're fine. Where's the detection? I don't know. Somebody buy it. There it is. Uh, it, was, it was a cooldown in the backpack. The dust was a cooldown. They wasted an entire e day. This is very good. I they have a DD, so. Frank needs to be careful here. He could die. Tier 1 tower, taken still very easily by the Luchini side. They still take a little bit longer to do it. They commit a lot of heroes there, which gives the Marana of all heroes a little bit more time to farm up top. She's getting her Rod of Vitos. And Papita's got to be careful. Words placed on the high ground. Oh. They see Robo Z, see and it's a free stun for the Witch Track. Arrow comes into the backside. Witch Track will dodge. They're still going for this tier two tower. X marks onto the Sand King. Gets run over by a boat and easily killed here. The Lesh is still hiding the trees. Madar has finished off his. Midas on his way to the Radiance. Should be farming pretty well right now. This game's still very close, so Ember Spirit with the deep remnant over to make sure that he doesn't get smacked around by the Abaddon. Might be thinking about the Courier Snipe, though. There's a couple of remnants to work with. He will think better of it, though. Smoke up from Papita and Robo Z, and they know exactly where Leo Style is. There's the Blind Torrent into the arrow. They pick up the regen rune right in front of the Ember Spirit, and that's just so well played by the Dire side. Sladen's arrows have been on point this game. Like, this guy has shot some really nice arrows. Great Easy kill on the lift track. They can probably turn this into a Tier 1. They don't even need to hit the Radiance time. These guys are just going for it. You know, when your team is feeling that confident enough to hit the arrow right, or rather the torrent right into the arrow, you, know, you may as well just rush these lanes down. Right. Oh, arrow again onto oh. the Ember oh. Spirit. This guy that's just for just style on, points, on. all right? You know, you don't even have right. to go after that kill. You're just like, yeah, that's right. You got arrowed, you fool. This is instilling fear in them. Oh, he's gonna X him. He X them. But they he's don't have detection. Bounty runes go two for two. You know, that is a good way of getting to your Radiance timing, getting the gold from the towers. Alright, very helpful. Epicenter blade yeah, dagger available. There's the Burrow Strike in. They don't want to use the Epicenter too up. soon. They got the tower, they don't care anymore. They got it. Yep, that's all they came for. Okay, what was he gonna go on mid? But it's just the Ember Spirit, so he just walks away, I guess. Yep, and he's so tanky, he hasn't even used the boat yet. <laughs> even just like casually die. Let's come out, and the boat gives him rum. Getting drunk on the job. That's the best way to do it. Alright. The Sladen has it, Atos. This guy's farm. It's a very good Atos game. Yep, he's, a he's ahead of his Abaddon as well. Oop, Courier. It's fine. Blink. Courier's still fine. Unfortunate. Leosta almost has his Maelstrom though. So once he gets that, it's going to be a very big power spike. And I assume he's probably going to go for the BKB afterwards. Or actually Radiance is probably better. So he doesn't really have anything to be afraid of. He might consider going for Yule. 
but I feel like it's very defensive. Like. Moonlight Shadow going around the side. Witch Doctor should be the first one to die, but there's not a whole lot of heroes or creeps here to soak up the cask. So they find him, he uses his ward. And now Infamous are looking for their second kill. Sword is just hiding the trees here. He's being very quiet. Yeah. That was a bad miss though from the Murata there. He ate to the void. He leapt twice for some reason, and then shot the arrow from a very far distance, and just missed. Very uncharacteristic, like, miss from Slide in this game. I feel like he's been very on point with most of his arrows. And now the Dire side has discovered that they've been rused. Atos onto the Sand King. He's going to leap up on top of him, double Starfall with the Torrent on top of it. He was not very patient, but it looks like, yeah, he, he's done, so. Yeah. And they might I mean, find a little bit more. Either. It goes down. There's no leaps though. Does he hit his arrow? I mean, there's no way. That's in a war right there. So it looks like Leo Style is going for the full set there. Oh, easiest deny in the world. Damn. This fish doctor is. These five players are just like proving their worth. In other ways, of just having items. You know? They're only close call there for the lift track. Uh, Madara almost. Oh, they spot the Ember. Arrow actually oh does it God. with a torrent on top of it. Burrow strike to give him a little bit more time, but the boat runs over him. He's been silenced. He has no way of getting out of there, and now Senor D is running away for his life. Sounds oh. as well. No and chance. the arrow, Bang. Papita I mean, gets the kill. He's the most important hero on the dire side, anyway. True. All right, oh. one hit of the Got curse the of Avernus, and that gives them the range that they need to get the X. <laughs> and guess what? The timing is almost there. They almost have the radiance on the. I mean, on the. Void. No, what am I saying? They have on the Koka, the Void, the everybody's the getting radiance. radiance this game. Everybody's getting a Radiance. I, I'm Oprah this game. Everybody gets a Radiance. You get a Radiance, you get a Radiance, and you get a Radiance. Alright, Oprah. The tier 2 tower in the mid lane gets saved. This Void has like a Mjolnir and Midas, but he doesn't have a BKB, so he doesn't really do anything in the fight. Can I get stunned? Or like silenced by someone, and he just did. They're probably going to look to take the bottom tower next on Infamous, and they're doing their best to make sure that the bot, the mid lane, is constantly being shoved out. They're doing a really good job this game of controlling the map. All these lanes are pushing in. Darasai with a lot of control of the map. A Fodic shield gives the Abbot on the conference to move forward. He uses the Brawl of Time immediately and. The kill goes out onto the Witch Doctor. Axel's dead. Yeah, I heard the Atos go, but I didn't actually see it there. Might be looking for a little bit more. Oh, Madar is ready to join the fight with his Radiance. I don't know about this. I think he needs to farm a little bit more. Usually, you like to, you would like to hit level 18 and get level 3 ult on um, Wraithking before you go fight because then you would have a 40 second cooldown and right now it's a 2 minute cooldown for your ult but I guess if you are confident in not dying you know, then it's not a big deal and honestly, really stupid how like cooldown from reincarnation goes from like 200 seconds to 120 and then 40 like how, how is it like fair that you have a 40 second reincarnation talent in the hero Heroes never die. Right. Arrow? That was a very easy arrow to hit. It was fun. It was yeah. The the Kunkka Marana combo just makes people so sad this game. The oh. boat with the chrono on top of it, but I don't really think that any of these heroes are going to be dying anytime soon. They don't feel very safe. But here comes the epicenter, but the hand of God gets used, so these heroes are still staying alive for so very long. The Wraith King's the only one to fall, and guess what? He's coming right back, Daddy Boys. Here with the reincarnation. 
Burrow strike through, but he's gonna get hit with the arrow immediately. Lucini's still doing fairly well in this fight. But we've got the Moonlight Shadow going. And they're thinking about continuing on to this void. Ends up being a three for three after the end of it all. Oh, Atos. Arrow, double starfall gives the Faceless Void a reincarnation of his own. Might be thinking about going in a little bit more. Wraith King won't be coming back after this one. Arrow comes through and say oh. goodbye to your Sand King. Unfortunately, the bash. the bash kills off the Wraith King, and now this Marana really needs to get away, and she's not going to get a chance. More bashes from the Bash Lord. <laughs> and we see the XD in the chat. <laughs> The XD. That was a sick chrono by Katara. Yeah, it was a really good chrono, and it really set up the epicenter for the Sand King. Even though you have all these survival tools for Infamous, they just could not survive that onslaught. The bad thing is, though, that combo will get a little bit worse as the game goes on. Going after the Faceless Void. A few hits, he has his time lock back up, but he will get silenced, and this is not looking very good. <laughs> this man knows no fear. He's got his creeps around him. He's got his homies. His, uh... He's never alone. Anytime he wants a friend, he just walks into the jungle and makes a new one. He's like the friendliest person ever. But if you mind control people, are they really your friend? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there's a Who are you to judge? there's a very like trippy video on YouTube where this guy plays Spore and he takes like an oath of pacifism. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Perfect. Just out the Yules. <laughs> and so he he makes an oath of pacifism and just never like hurts anybody for the duration of the yeah. game and just runs away from conflict and then when you get to like having civilizations and stuff if people aren't happy you just use your mega happy laser to make them yeah. be happy <laughs> it's a really trippy video you should check it out maybe i don't know no, i i never liked the civilization part of four like i played the game and i loved the part where like you could like hunt and play like third person and like kill things and that was like the most fun when he got to like building houses and stuff i was like Ugh, i hate this it's like I, I barely ever made it to that part i would only play the game for the to make like my own spore you know and then like run around attacking other spores no, that was fun i've never played the game myself oh no yeah. the skeleton army is going after the witch doctor all right it's okay there's a sandstorm Okay, Atos? Oh. This is not scared at all. She might get Burrow struck him. She'll leap away. So they smoked? I think they're trying to kill Kotaro? They don't... I, I don't know what's happening. Like They're like running in circles right now. Holy cow, he has the triple cow combo. Oh! Yeah, he's got the boys. One. One stun. Two. two. Perfect! Yeah, doesn't even need the he doesn't even doesn't need the third, need third one. Here we go, Chronos <laughs> here out on the three and eight. Abaddon just walks into it. He's like, I want to be with my friends. And he's trying to come on top of it as well. Okay. Wraith King decides to get into the fight. Hand of God gets used. Marana trying her best to get away, but she's not going to be so lucky. Atos to keep the void in place. But she needs an Abaddon to help, and the Abaddon is not willing. His cooldowns are also not available either. Adara decides to come around the side, still has a Radiance going for a strike. It's out on to two, and these two are going to be kept here for a long time. That cask is bouncing. Eventually, it will bounce off, to, off over to the Skeletons. They find Leo's style over to the side, but I would imagine that Infamous just want to back up from that. Th this fight did not go too well from as soon as that Chronosphere hit on to three, and then the Abaddon walked in. Right. I think um, the buyback from Chen was good, but like, yeah, the Abaddon walking into the Chrono, not the best. And then afterwards, they tried their best to keep Marana alive. And if she stayed alive, it would have been really good. They're going for this really all in push horror kind of build. And, uh. Ooh, I'm gonna stop the stun. There's no. Is there vision on him? 
One, Eventually they do. Five, six, six. Well, oh, he did guys. stop running though. He, he, he like escaped to the high ground and he just kind of chilled on the high ground. He was like, uh, going kind of, like, for the strategy like... where if you stay still enough, they'll think you're a statue. Right. <laughs> Alright, looks like there's a setup pop. He's gonna try to arrow. Oh no. He doesn't miss. He doesn't miss, but the Abaddon gets stunned out. Unfortunately though, the Latrac is a little bit confused. And he heard it's he hurt himself in his confusion. Oh? The arrow. Oh my god! Okay. <laughs> what is this guy? The most ridiculous arrow. He's going even deeper. There's nothing they can do uh, about it. There's no way. The torrent was right he though. He got pulled over though. They're like gonna go on this. They see him now, they see him. He's ready. Three, two, one, eight, two. Almost? Surprised he didn't even try for it. It's nighttime. Whoa. Big arrow predictions. Dude, he actually predicted that he would time walk, and he didn't time walk. Oh my god. That's the only explanation for why he missed, though. Well, still, this game is very close. 28 minutes in. It's only a 2k gold lead for Infamous so far. Yeah, I think Infamous needs to do something soon because once the Void gets, like, one more item, it's going to be really hard for them to kill him, uh, especially if the item's the BKB. So for now, he, you know, he does have a meal in there and a Satanic, but he's still killable. That's he's on sure. the cliff. Oh, I think they know. He's on the cliff. Arrow? Oh, he just that, that is... Uh, that was the hardest arrow of his life. <laughs> What does Abba have? Good for a solo thing. Yeah, I think their timing is BKB Kunkka, AC Wraith King, Solar Crest. No, 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 Solar Crest is too long. Uh, yeah, those two items, I guess. And they take the top tower, they take the next Roche, which spawn, may spawn in 20 seconds, and then they go high ground. Oh, Void going for it. Look at that, he's found the Wraith King. Easy. This could be really bad. <laughs> oh, but the the Golems. Mud Golems are my favorite creep, by the way. I, I was lying about the Kobold Foreman. Mud Golems are okay. the best. Because of their lack of posture. No. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I thought it's because they split the two after they that die. That too. Okay, Wraith King's Midas about to be off cooldown. He needs Midas something. Midas something. Midas the catapult. Nice. Yeah, but now they know they're where he is. Up. So if they find heroes, Please. they're going to initiate. I don't, feel like, I don't think he cares though. They find the Abaddon. The Abaddon's like, hey, hey, you guys think it's just me? I dare you to try it. It is just me. <laughs> 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 but I'm gonna pretend like it isn't just me. Uh -huh. Alright, they have the solar press now. They can probably just siege. I, I really do think they need to siege right now. I I'm not sure what they're waiting for. Because the longer they, they buy, the, the longer they wait, the stronger the enemy heroes get. I mean, obviously, pretty obvious that they get stronger as time goes on. But like, right now, Leshtrak doesn't have max skills, you know, he doesn't have the ability to clear skeletons as well. Ember still doesn't have his axe, he probably wants to save a buyback. Murat. I don't think they should wait for Murat on Vessel. I don't think this Vessel is that important. They can't wait for Roshan. They can't, that is allowed though, that is allowed. It will spawn in 20 seconds. Look at this Mud Golem! He's just chilling there. Did you notice that the Mud Golem scratched his head? Really? I didn't know that they did that, yeah. Oh, they're gonna commit the Midnight Shadow for this. Just to make sure that the Abaddon doesn't die. I was just talking down. to my friends about how Dota... Look at it, it's just scratching his head. I'm just watching a Mud Golem, sorry about that, but like... This game is so aesthetically pleasing. There's I think, so many cool lines. I think when Double A was casting, all he did was just stay in showcase mode the whole time. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. <laughs> it was. 
Uh, Yule Scepter onto the Marana. She leaps away, but still gets stunned. Oh. And she's going to leap over to the high ground as well. X marks into an Atos. The arrow will not be coming through onto the faceless void. And Abaddon decides that he wants to fight. Arrow will finally fly. Doesn't hit onto anything. That's a close call there. Oh, Papita is in trouble. His wolf is in trouble. Oh, no. Uh, oh. He's fine. He looks really sad, though, when he's stunned. Right. S sit th sits there for a while. Pretty good boy. Oh, DD rune. It's very good. It's a big daddy rune. Big daddy. Okay, let's see what's happening here. Chen. Yeah, he's got his items. He almost has a pipe. And by almost, I mean like a thousand gold away. I don't know what's happening. It feels like they're, they're too... They want to win, but they don't know how. Oh. They have BKB. Oh. On Void now, by the way, so... I think Sladen probably clicked it. We know. Frank spots the Sand King. Who gets caught up. There's Another the Moonlight Bra Shadow. Everybody goes invisible. Oh, they're gonna know that the Lich Track is here. This is an RA kill to get. TP in from the Wraith King. And the Atos. Into Raid Fire Blast, Dual Scepter baited, there's the arrow. That's my uh, X marks the spot impression. Oh, yeah. Pretty good, actually. Thanks. Okay, the TPing. I think they want the smoke or something? Yeah, they definitely want to smoke. Yep. 3, 2, 1, smoke. They see the void. No, they don't. They put a ward in the high. Nope, that's Witch Doctor's ward. They bought someone. They do Radiant find the Witch off. Doctor and see they Kataro. see There the is void. no jump whatsoever. I'm not sure what's happening. They're just running at them. It's a show of dominance. They want the high ground, but they have no ward. All right, they get the Witch After Doctor. X the into arrow. Dust on top of it. Double dust for the for the BM. But okay, they might be caught off. That's the Hand of God. The boat will be coming through to give him the rum. The triple run and over to try to get him. It doesn't really matter. And Void is just waiting for the perfect moment to get the chrono. But it doesn't matter. Ember Spirit's dead. He's buying back. Void's chasing after the Marana. But uh, he's still holding his chrono. There's the uh, torn up in the he's air. He dead. gets the chrono out, but he's still dying so much. The Starfall secures the kill, but it's okay. Witch Doctor still got his death word going through that chrono. He will fall thanks to the torn as Kunkka goes right up to him, slaps him with that sword. Void has no buyback. He's dead for 84 seconds. They'll find the Sand King as well. He's dead. Both of these heroes that are here right now, they have to be careful because they do not have buyback. Embers would be a dieback as well. Infamous Ember to the has high no ground. Ember there, so it should be hard. Yeah, he triple rendered it in and didn't really even hit them onto the 10. I guess he was looking for anybody on the back line. Tier 3 tower in the base falls, looking at the mid lane of Rex. With track, I don't... Okay. I guess that was the right timing on the Yules. They find the full set of Rex. 40 seconds left on the Void respawning. Sand King's back in 10, but it seems like Infamous just don't give a damn. 40 second cooldown on a reincarnation skill, by the way. Perfectly balanced. And that's a full set of Rex bottom as well. Sand King looking for any stragglers, but he won't find any. And guess who's up? Big Daddy Roshan. And guess who doesn't have Chrono because he wasted it in the fight? Chen. Whoops, whoops. Just yeah, kidding. Chen never has a Chrono. <laughs> he wishes he did. <laughs> I don't know if he does. Dude, this Chen. Oh my god. This Chen has somebody's BKB. Alright, he gave it to him. <laughs> he was just carrying a BKB around. He's being it wasn't a, uh, uh, <laughs> a I guess a better courier? New meta courier. I guess? Actually, he's a worse courier, isn't he? He's slower. He can't fly. Hey, I'm just giving him the benefit of the doubt, okay? There is no doubt. He's just worse. <laughs> Alright, the Radiant what's expiring in 1-0. It's dead. To catch someone, but they miss it. 
Yeah, they missed the Split Earth underneath the Abaddon, and it's probably not the best hero for them to initiate on anyway. He's keeping everybody from, from Lucini back as the rest of the infamous side take down the Sand King. It's still going on to the Abaddon, who still has borrowed time. I don't know. These decisions seem pretty questionable as the arrow again hits on the Witch Doctor. Where's the detection? I don't really need it. And the chicken dies! They just fed him the chicken! They don't need creeps, Void. You're going to go down top lane. That's the wrong lane. For some reason, the Wraith King is TPing back into the base he's to get his recalled, Yeah, he's gonna get recalled. And they're gonna do Roshan. There's a gem of true sight now for the champ. Oh, the arrow! That is very high skill. Best arrow ever. Best arrow SA. Nice. Alright, Roshan. Wraith King has another life. I actually have no idea what he's gonna do with this life. What what is the point of giving the Wraith King the Aegis? What I mean, mean Give it to your Chen for Christ's sake. <laughs> he's the one that's getting focused every game. No one ever hits the friggin' Wraith King. Or give it to your Murata if you don't want to give it to your Shen. I think the subs deserve it in this game. They've been doing a pretty good job, but unfortunately it doesn't really seem like it matters. Madara goes right up to the high ground. What does it matter though? Look at the Kunkka. The Kunkka is 5,000 health. Oh my god. Oh, first step, guys. Better watch out, and he's dead. But he uses the BKB. The boat's coming through. It's going to do the secondary stun onto the Witch Doctor. Senor D goes to the back lines with the epicenter, but it doesn't really matter at all. These heroes have taken so little damage as a result of it, and it's just all he can do to stay alive. Faceless Void by his back. We've got Ember Spirit on the back lines, and eventually Wraith King is like, you know what, can you just stop hitting my heroes like that? This is getting a little bit ridiculous. He continues to hit the tier 3 tower, the initiation from Lucini pretty much over. Burrow Strike onto 2. Here comes the initiation once more onto the Wraith King. He gets stunned. Yo, he has reincarnation again. He's, He's really again, stage. won't even lose nice. the Aegis, oh so there's another Ray Fire Blast coming out. And the arrow yes. onto the Faceless Void. He tried to go for the Chrono. They're not really even focusing him at all. Eventually they do, though. He time walks forward, gets the Chrono off onto two. And one of them is the Wraith King, and the other one is the Kunkka. Both very low percentage of killing either of those two heroes. And he's not Save even going to be able to get the time walk away. Finally, the Aegis gets used as the Faceless Void dies back. That is 120 seconds on the sideline. Here comes the boat. You ever been run over by a car? No, but I bet it hurts a lot. You ever been run, run over by a boat? That's just silly. All these heroes on the Radiant side are going to die. We've got Infamous rolling over, making it into the tiebreaker with a lot of morale up against no ping. It will be a best of one to see who gets into the minor playoff qualifiers for the South America region. They haven't called it yet, but it, this is yeah, it. All right, yeah. Man, Papita lived through all of that. So, I guess he didn't need Aegis. The boy's a beast. They should have given it to him anyway. Right. Obviously. I mean, Rating did not need the Aegis. Let's be real. It was a crutch. It actually was. He had to play riskier. That's, I guess. If that's a thing. Well, now we've got to cast the tiebreakers, right? Yep. Exciting stuff. So it's between no ping and infamous, right? Yep, well, Infamous and No Ping are going to be in a best of one to decide who takes third place in the group and will be in the minor playoffs. Okay. And yeah, that'll be it for us for now, and we'll be back after a short break to bring you the conclusion of the South America region qualifiers.